All right, all right, all right. Bungie has just dropped their big weekly news article, The Twid, and we got some crazy changes coming to how power works in the final shape, apparently. I briefly glossed through this, and it looks like we got some big stuff coming. So let's go ahead and read through this together and see what's going on when it comes to power in the final shape. Fireteam power was announced at the Destiny 2 showcase in 2023, but we've got a lot more coming with the final shape when it comes to improving how power works in Destiny 2. If you don't know what they're talking about with fireteam power, basically it's whoever in your fireteam has the highest power level, that's what everyone's level will be raised to. So effectively, you can take people through challenging content when they're extremely underleveled. We revisited our power systems and overhauled our UI to make power more intuitive and approachable than ever before. You'll find a whole bunch of changes detailed below, all made with the following goals in mind. Power offers a meaningful progression that rewards players for a real sense of getting stronger. Destiny 2 is a game you can always play with your friends regardless of your power level. And then we got lower the barrier to entry for Destiny 2 story content. Got it. Power should be intuitive and understandable for both experienced and new players alike. Well, it seems like all seems like good uh, philosophy there. Fire team power in the final shape playing with friends will be easier than ever no matter if you play every day haven't played in years or trying destiny 2 for the first time the player with the highest power level in the fire team will become the power leader and all other players in the fire team will be brought up to power five below the power leader if their power isn't already higher fire team power all only affects activity difficulty and your unadjusted power level will still determine the power of your rewards so being a power leader will also give you a boost to any commendations earned at the end of the activity. There you go. So being the power leader, you can flex. You can finally flex your uh, fire team, your power level at the, when you get to the highest, that season rank uh, 500 and whatever it may be. Interesting stuff. I think it's cool. I think that adds a lot of, you know, a lot for a lot of returning players, a lot of intrigue for them. Your power level will now be displayed next to the activity power cap right by the launch button so you can easily determine how difficult the activity will feel interesting we got that we got the adjusted power 1995 very interesting so you got a 2000 power person and two 1950 people and it's expert level which is 2000 which interesting looks like they've raised the power cap to 2000 hold up hold up there's power level 2000 now we've been at 1810 for a while like they might be raising it this is going to be interesting when your power is increased by your fire team your adjusted power will take its place here soya's is the power leader and is boosting rook to 1995 power with fire team power friends should always be able to play together regardless of power level removing power limits from legacy gear one problem we encountered when designing fireteam power was power limits found on older gear items you might have noticed as you read about fireteam power that the adjusted power shared by the power leader would sidestep the caps of the old power limited items making it possible to ignore them after thoroughly considering the problem space we came to the decision to remove power limits from all items starting in the final shape whoa all right very interesting Always being able to play with your friends was a huge goal for us. As we close out the Light and Darkness Saga, we want to rally all Guardians, active, returning, and new, to help fight the Witness, and there is no better way to play Destiny with your fire team. As we pursued this goal, it became apparent that power limits were fundamentally incompatible with fire team power. We understand that many old power limited items have been dismantled by this point, and we regret that we have no recovery mechanism for these. Dang. All those items that you deleted? that were sunset are now going to be viable once again that hurts r.i.p to all the kindled orchids out there dang that really hurts going forward we intend to reintroduce sources for most of or all of these updated to modern destiny sandbox standards with added properties such as origin traits and build crafting perks as we started to do with the brave arsenal and destiny 2 into the light dang you guys that is the ultimate the ultimate uh, middle finger, unfortunately. It was unintentional. I know Bungie didn't mean to do it to us, but they sunset all our weapons. And so then they're just sitting in our vault for years. And we're like, I don't know if I should keep this anymore. Eventually, after years and needing more vault space, you, you would delete your sunset weapons. And now those sunset weapons would be some of the best weapons in the game with crazy perk combinations that you can no longer acquire. That's actually crazy. We're improving power bands to further lower the barrier of entry in the final shape the soft cap will only require 40 power to reach down from the usual 150. 
This change should allow new lights enough time to get familiar with the core of Destiny's gear power system before stepping into the broader game without holding them back. You can also easily achieve the soft cap by playing through either difficulty of the final shape campaign. If you complete the campaign on legend difficulty, you'll be rewarded with an entire gear set at 1960 power, plus 20 power into the powerful band, giving you a great head start towards being raid ready for contest mode, which is 1965 power. So they're making it pretty easy, pretty accessible for people to get up to proper power level for that final shape raid, giving everyone 1960 gear from the legend campaign. That's good. The resulting power bands in the final shape will be power floor 1900, soft cap 1940, powerful cap 1990, hard cap slash pinnacle cap 2000. I kind of thought they would do that because we were sitting at 1810 and I was like 2000 is a nice rounded number, you know, looks good. You know, 2000, like that big leap right there. I was kind of wondering if they were going to make that jump, kind of lock it there. I'm kind of glad they did because I think that's a nice. Activity power, beginning with the final shape, the power level of activities will become much easier to understand. We're also making it so players can enjoy Destiny 2's story and free roam content at any level. Activities will be divided into two categories, power disabled and power enabled. Power disabled activities play the same for everyone, no matter their power level. Anyone at any level can jump right in and experience them to the fullest. As such, increasing your power won't change the difficulty you experience, and you can't over level the enemies in these activities. Power disabled activities includes campaigns, both normal and legend difficulty, seasonal story missions, free roam destinations, crucible, and some legacy content. Got it. So you got power disabled, power enabled things, which is interesting. That kind of messes with the power fantasy where you, you know, you first roam around the Cosmodrome and you get absolutely beat up, get mauled by a red bar dreg. And then with time, you get so powerful that you could literally just don't even you ignore them and you just run them over with your spare. All right. So interesting. We'll see how it feels once this goes live. It seems like a, a good change overall, like the power system has been needing an overhaul. So I'm not entirely opposed to it. And uh, I'm optimistic that this could be a good change. I feel like it could be more inclusive to people returning as well. Power enabled activities by comparison are where you grow stronger by improving your power. These have these each have an activity power cap or a power level at which you will be have achieved maximum effectiveness. We've improved our UI to show you exactly what these activity power caps are. And if you've achieved them, enemies will have a set feel for how tough they are, even at the cap. But you will notice yourself getting stronger as your power level grows. Power enabled activities include Vanguard playlists, Nightfall, Seasonal activities, Exotic Mission Rotators, Trials of Osiris, Raids, and Dungeons. There you go. So that's what you really want is that power fantasy is really nice in the game where you feel rewarded the more you play, the more powerful you get. And it's nice just running through some of these activities. The majority of like almost the entirety of the game is like that right now. Now we'll have activities that are power disabled. It'll mix things up quite a bit. So we got every power enabled activity falls into one of five different tiers or one unique mode. So you got difficulty tier, activity power cap, how to master, example activities, standard 1945, focus on growing your power level, Vanguard ops, seasonal ops, okay. advanced, previously hero, 1995, expert, 2005 power, master, 2010, grandmaster, 2020, got it. And contest mode is gonna be 1965 because it's a limited time thing that just comes out with uh, the arrival of, um, the new raid interesting stuff there got yep, day one raids specifically so grandmaster is going to be 2020 power got it should be 20 power levels under but i guess your artifact will get you there all right it's worth calling out that gameplay tuning in our existing high diff high difficulty content remains unchanged with these updates and we are continuing to experiment with new activities that evolve in difficulty throughout the run such as in deep dives coils and onslaught we look forward to continuing to explore ways to make difficult activities engaging and rewarding to conquer while making your ongoing power climb feel meaningful and important. Artifact bonus power. The way you're in bonus power from the seasonal artifact is staying the same at its core, but we rebalanced it to better offer a meaningful and rewarding progression given other upcoming changes. Interesting. With the additional time offered by each episode, we've increased the number of weeks with the seasonal challenges, and they also be receiving a buff to their XP rewards. Given this, we need to make some adjustments to the XP requirements for artifact bonus power levels. Our goals for the rebalance were that actively engaged players could attain similar artifact levels achieved by the end of an episode, and that artifact powers remains a rewarding pursuit throughout. Interesting. 
Count Wide Power, we've got Titan, Hunter, Warlock. Most of us play primarily just one. But what if it didn't have to be so hard to walk in the different classes? Shoes, Greaves, Strides, Boots. We're also lowering the barrier to entry to play multiple classes by introducing a Count Wide Power. All right, so you level up your Hunter and your Titan and Warlock are at the same level. That's actually, that's actually really epic. Starting in the final shape, the gear rewards you earn on any character will drop with a power level relative to the highest power character on your account. Level up the power in your Hunter, and when you switch over to your Titan or Warlock, the gear rewards you earn will be around your Hunter's level. The exact power of rewards will still depend on the source, but the power you earn on one character will positively influence rewards you find on your other characters. Nice. This is actually awesome. This is the reason why not everyone plays all three characters, so this might actually uh, open that door up a little bit more. Because cross character, character power progression is now intrinsic to the game, power boosts are no longer offered for sale. Campaign skips will still be available for alt characters. These changes aim to make switching between characters and classes easier than ever before. So try something new and put on that Mark Cloak Bond for the first time. Nice. Very cool. I like that part. We got reward power. Okay, wow, more power stuff. Here we go. Finally, we're making some improvements to the power of rewards. For some time now, select activities such as ritual playlists have had a chance of dropping a powerful reward with plus one power for players between the soft cap and the powerful cap. In the final shape, we're extending this beyond select activities to just about every reward source in Destiny 2. This change will help players gradually reach the powerful cap no matter what activities they choose to play. So you aren't just limited to the just weekly powerful rewards. Nice. Okay. Additionally, we're improving the power rewards for you to purchase from vendors and collections. All items purchased from vendors will now drop no lower than three below your highest possible power. And items reacquired from collections will be five below instead of all the way down at the power floor. Very interesting. Uh, so it should make the grind for power a little more streamlined, a little more simplistic. Kind of like you play the game and you just you level up by just playing no matter what type of vibe from that. And then we got ready to battle Pantheon. Oh, I'm very, very ready. There's going to be all these bosses. We're going to be absolutely dominating this. Make sure to come by the live stream for this one. This is going to be excellent. Looking forward to that. Then we got Welcome to Hardware. No abilities, weapons only. Next week, Crucible Labs will feature Hardware Supremacy. The Hardware modifier disables all abilities and puts the focus on gunplay. Collect Special and Heavy from crates and don't forget to pick up those crests. As with all labs, we will be paying close attention to how this modifier is received, so please try it and give us feedback what you think. Hopefully it plays out well. We'll see what the PvP community thinks about hardware. Last chance to earn those Iron Banner rewards. So this is going to be your last Iron Banner, so make sure if you want to get that Tusk of the Boar, that multi mock. that's... I guess this is the week to do it. I mean, you're going to have to play Pantheon that week as well, so... They're putting a lot of stuff in one week, that's for sure. So unfortunately, this is the last week of Iron Banner this season, but if you want that Tusk of the Boar, get to grinding in there. And they're doing their cosplay. Cosmodrome is back, so I think they have like a cosplay contest. Pretty cool if you want to enter that. If you're into that type of thing. You can pet the Exodogs. They got the Archie quest that was out that we talked about, and the plush is available if you want to buy that. You buy a plushie. And then we got the player support report. Got a new light kit update that's coming with veteran players requiring the new light kit from a, a, the new. Oh, wow. I just butchered that right there. Veteran players who acquire a new light kit from Ikora will no longer have their save loadouts of the corresponding Sun class overwritten. Interesting. And then I got a list of known issues. Artist of the week. Nice. Movie of the week, nice. That's wrap on that one. Very cool. That power overhaul for a final shape actually looks pretty exciting, pretty interesting. Looks like they might streamline things and should be pretty good. They also had three trailers where they demonstrated some of the new dread enemies. We got the Harbinger and the Weaver. We got the Husk. We got the Grim. We'll be watching those and checking those out, breaking that stuff down later. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Keep you up to date on all the news in Destiny 2. Smash the like button. I'll see you in the next one.